In this video, we're gonna discuss and review the NECA Ultimate Flasher Gremlin. Welcome to the Swear Wolves Horror Podcast YouTube channel. I'm Brett. If you're a returning subscriber, I just wanna thank you for coming back. And if you're new to this channel, I wanna thank you for stopping by please do consider clicking that subscribe button as well as that notification bell below. We upload videos on a regular basis in which we review anything and everything horror from action figures and toys to soundtracks, various collectibles, video games, you name it. And today, we're talking about this NECA Ultimate Flasher Gremlin. I've said it before, I was hesitant to start collecting Gremlins because there's just so many of them. Um, it, but I'm, I, I, I'm hooked now. I, I just love all these different gremlins that I've been getting and I've been opening up. They are some really good quality figures. They look really cool, all set up. I do need to get another cabinet though, because that spider gremlin, if you haven't seen that video, check that out right here. But that spider gremlin took up a whole one of these shelves. And so I gotta get another cabinet and start putting <laughs> some more of these gremlins in those. But uh, that's a video for another time. This Gremlin, uh, this Ultimate Flasher Gremlin, was one that when it was announced, I knew I wanted it. So uh, I'm very happy to find it out in the wild. My wife was out at Target looking around. She saw it, texted me, and I said, please pick it up. And she, of course, did. So uh, let's look at the packaging here. We got cute, clever, mischievous, mischievous, intelligent, dangerous. And then, of course, we got the Flasher Gremlin bursting through this artwork of uh, Gizmo here in the box peeking out. Gremlins, Ultimate Flasher Gremlin. On the side just says Gremlins, Ultimate Flasher Gremlin. And the back, the writing is always the same on these uh, gadget salesmen looking for a gift for a son, buys a mogwai. Uh, goes south pretty quick after that. Different pictures of the figure posed with various different accessories. As with all of these NECA Ultimates, we have a opening here and we get the window box which shows us the figure with all the accessories right here and then of course this famous artwork or not artwork this famous photo um which is directly out of the movie of uh the gremlin flashing Wait a minute. <laughs> there's the figure why don't we go ahead and open it up take a look at it in more detail and give it a review I got the figure opened, and before we get to the figure itself, let's go ahead and talk about these accessories. Now, there are a lot of accessories, so I'm going to try to go through them rather quickly, but we'll start, we'll go uh, right to left. Actually, we'll start with the alternate hand here. Uh, this figure did come with an alternate hand, like most of them do, and you can see that this is posed in a closed grip like this, but definitely a good molding of the hand, um, good texture that lizard-like texture of the hand and then down to the claws and just everything about this is good. Um, I don't need to go on and on about this alternate hand because we'll get into more of that when we talk about the figure. That hand is closed because it's probably to hold this sledgehammer or croquet mallet, I guess just mallet of some sort. Um, but uh, definitely looks like wood. It's got that grainy uh texture to it uh that they carved in you can see it in that light there plus the paint job which makes it look like wood green then you have going down to the handle here more of that wood green so just looks really good and, and the imperfections in it really make this stand out uh, to me at least as some thought went into this to make it look like wood but of course it's plastic so um, just a just a good job there with this mallet. Also comes with some sunglasses. These are wraparound sunglasses here. I mean, there's nothing really to say about that. Got a bow tie here that you can clip around his neck if you so desire. Just a lot of accessories to replicate various different shots in the bar. Got this hand puppet here.
The cool thing about all these different accessories is obviously you're not going to use them all on one figure, but if you had more of um, different figures or if you had, you could like army build some of these gremlins and use these different accessories that you have. So like I said, here's the hand puppet. It does look like it's um, like a soft goods material because of the texture on there, but it is all like hard uh, rubbery plastic. The visor which can be used to replicate the poker playing scene. Gotta have a mug of beer. This looks good. Got those suds on the top, the foam. Just, oh, it does come out. So you could have them with an empty glass or you could have them with a full glass. Uh, so that does come out. He's got cigarettes, don't smoke kids, but if you want your figures to smoke, there's uh, looks like four cigarettes here. We'll get closer detail on that. Uh, pretty good for the fact of how small it is. You can see it next to my fingernail. It's just not even an inch long. But uh, with its burnt ash end coming off there, smoking a cigarette. I'll smoke. I got some playing cards here. This is like a poker hand. They're all just one um, piece, but it uh, looks like there's four cards, so not quite a full hand, but uh, good, good detail on that. You can have him holding, of course, the poker or the playing cards. This is, I thought this was really cool. Just one piece here, but you got all the chips stacked and uh, the various different things. There's some popcorn. There's some playing cards underneath and it just looks good just laying right there, especially if you had the, the poker chips. So if you had some kind of table that you could sit a few gremlins at and you could have one wearing a visor, one smoking a cigarette, wearing uh, the bow tie, etc. But that's not why we got this figure. We didn't get the figure for all of this. We got this figure. Well, also there's a fedora, which I will put on this figure, but I wanted to talk about the fedora real quick because I thought something cool that they did. I said in my last video when I was reviewing the uh, back to school, ultimate back to school gremlin, how I liked how the hat was molded on. Well, they of course can't do that with this one because there's all these accessories that they want you to be able to kind of change in and out if you so desire. But I was having a hard time with that Ultimate Gamer Gremlin because I couldn't get the hat to stay on how I wanted it to. It was just really hard. What they've done with this, um, and we'll talk about the details of the fedora, but they've carved out like little notches here that fit into the eyebrows of the figure. So when you set it on, he just kind of, it just kind of stays on and without much problem. So I really do dig that. It just makes it a lot easier to uh, keep the, the, the hat on the figure. The detail in this looks great. I mean, this looks like Indiana Jones. Um, it is just, of course, hard plastic rubbery material, but it looks leather. And uh, there's the inside of it and around. So I really like this hat. Uh, this will be a good addition to put on top of his head. The figure itself is what we're here to talk about. I do have them on a stand like I do with most all the gremlins. They're really hard to uh, stand on their own. They have these little tiny feet. They tend to be a little top heavy, but uh, here is the figure. I'm gonna take them off the stand for discussion purposes, but let's go ahead and talk about the articulation. We do have some uh, articulation here in the ears. They can turn uh, a little bit up and down the head like all of these do, tilt from side to side, kind of like a dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, does have a little bit of movement up and down and side to side as well, not so much. The jaw has articulation, he can open up and he can close. We do have that ball joint at the shoulder and we have a joint at the elbow. The wrist, wrist excuse me, can turn. Uh, that's the same on both arms, of course, does swivel at the waist and bend at the hip a little bit. We also have some hip movement uh, with the legs that can move at the hip. We have uh, double joints 
here so you can bend that knee backwards but you can also bend this one forward so much like uh, I said like a dog earlier uh, you have that extended foot with that new claw <laughs> right there so looks pretty good let's go ahead and talk about the detail here uh, starting with the head just your traditional gremlin sculpt which uh, uh, again I've said it before but uh, I'll say it again I just like the look of these figures is as disgusting as they are they're cute to me so um, I like the eyes the red eyes the red and yellow eyes the mouth you know he just looks so much more crazy and and uh, mean when the mouth is open you know mischievous 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 um, with his mouth open uh, I like that but the sculpt wise I mean it's just the same as all the other ones it's got those big ears and the paint on the back with that you know light green um, yellow ish color with the lines and then of course that scaly look that reptile scaly look these are just great looking figures great looking characters all around um goes all the way down as far as the body goes to the hands i mean we could talk about the hand sculpts ad nauseum but i won't but they just look really good he's got this uh trench coat which is a soft goods trench coat um a lot of times on these ultimate figures we get uh more molded rubber um, clothing, which is fine, but we have started seeing some uh, soft goods uh, come out of this, which in certain circumstances I do like. So in this one in particular, I think it's necessary. You got to have a soft goods um, trench coat in order to have him be able to open it up. So let's see how that happens. How do we get him to open it up? Assuming we have to take off. Yeah, it's my next one. That's what you get this figure for, right? So he can flash. How the hell did that happen? Yeah. Oh man, it's like really buckled. It's like an actual buckle for the. Boy, you'd think that they would have this be a tearaway thing. Oh, move this camera now so you can see what I have to do. You have to actually unbuckle this, like you would do. Oh, boy, that's that's a lot of work. Um, I wish they would have done that differently, but uh, you know, who am I to judge? Anyway. There you go. He doesn't really have much to flash, so he shouldn't be really proud of what he's showing. But, uh, and that's kind of the pose that he would be in if he was indeed flashing. So, just a, just cool. Uh, the trench coat, I really dig the, the style of it. I wish there was an easier way to open and close it without having to um, buckle the entire thing but that is kind of I guess neat that they that they went to great extent to to make this trench coat look pretty real um, but uh, that's that's what he looks like in all of his glory so that's it for the figure why don't I go ahead up you know what I'm probably just gonna have to pose him flashing right I mean, he is the ultimate flasher gremlin. I mean, you're not going to buy the ultimate flasher gremlin and not have him posed flashing. You have to have him posed flashing. Top heavy. Like I was saying, you got to have him posed flashing. I mean, he is the ultimate flasher gremlin. So that's probably what I'm going to do. So why don't we go ahead and get him set up? I'll get him kind of arranged how I want to be, and we'll be right back for our final review. All right. I got the figure posed how I want him to be posed, and uh, I really do like this look. I put the sunglasses on him, put the cigarette in his mouth, but I also put the fedora on him because I, I like that look. And then, of course, the trench coat is wide open. Also laid these playing cards down here and this beer. Um, I just like the added little accessories, maybe when I display them. Um, I have to get up to either get some kind of table or make some kind of table so I can put some of these other accessories like like this on there um, but uh, overall I dig the figure one thing that I wish they would have done differently and they've done this with some other figures in the past is put a little wire form in the trench coat that would just help like keep it open I mean it stays open just fine but kind of so you could mold it like in his hands you can see it doesn't quite fit the hand on this side when it fits that side 
So you really do have to do some finagling. Also make it easier for that jacket to kind of open and close with like maybe Velcro or something. That's one thing that I would have liked to see done a little bit differently on these figures, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. And maybe you got some different ideas. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you disagree or you agree with me. But overall, I like this figure. I'm gonna give it four and a half out of five Pamela Voorhees heads. Let me know what you think down below. And if you like this video, please click the like button. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed and you feel so inclined, click both that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. We are the Swear Wolves Horror Podcast and we do a weekly show in which we review horror movies. So please check us out by searching for The Swear Wolves wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. You can also visit our website at theswearwolves.com. So for The Swear Wolves, I'm Brett. Hi, this is Brett with the Swear Wolves. When I'm not editing videos or creating content for YouTube, I just sit here and wait and wait. If you like the video that you just saw, go ahead and click that button right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click that other button right there. I'll wait.